by now you could potentially double the amount of revenue and business that you earn in 2024. And there's literally one hack that you can do that will accomplish this for you. When we're as contractors, service providers, we are selling a solution to a problem to our clients, which is, in my case, getting their the client's yard service, taking care of their home, the exterior, taking care of the yards, the bushes, bushes, the garden, everything that on the outside of the home. So they don't want to do this. They don't have time to do this. It's a problem for them, and they are willing to pay somebody to do that. And they want somebody who they can trust to fix that problem for them. In the process of this, and they come out and give you an estimate request, and you come out and view their property, or maybe you're doing an online quote, or however it is, the one thing that's gonna double how many of these people are actually gonna sign up with you is your ability to give them a quote within a timely manner. And what I specifically mean within a timely manner, I mean within two hours of them calling in, they need to have a quote from your company in their hand, especially if it's an easy like maintenance job. Obviously, if you're doing project-based work and there's design and there's more moving parts, that's not gonna be the same case, but you can still stay in contact with them along the estimate process. If you're doing project-based work, like, hey, we just finished up your design, what do you think? Or, hey, we are you know 50% way through of completing your initial design after it's complete then we'll have your quote ready for you just constantly keeping them updated uh, so for for landscape and project based work it's going to look a little different i'm going to specifically focus on maintenance and reoccurring services because that's what i specialize in that's all we sell it's just reoccurring subscription based work last season i made a distinct effort to track closing ratio and the amount of time it took for our clients to receive quotes from us. We, on average, had um, roughly a 15 to 20% closing ratio. I made this one adjustment of sending quotes out faster within two hours, and our close ratio doubled. So when you think about that, if you think about the number of calls you get each year, if you would double the amount of those calls that signed up with you, you would double your business and the new amount of work that you got. Now, when you take that and say you are taking the, you you are sending these quotes out, you're getting them out in a timely manner. They're fast, like as fast as you can possibly get them out there. And your closing ratio is still not right. Then you're going to want to evaluate a couple of other items in your sales process. The first thing I would go to is like, A, your price. So check your pricing. Obviously, if your pricing set in a, in a way to where you have your overhead recovery built into it, you're collecting your profit margin on top of that, uh, and your prices are good, then you can scratch that one off. Maybe it's not your price. Maybe it's how you deliver the estimates. Maybe they don't look clean enough. Maybe you need to present more of a show. Like when somebody calls you, that is the beginning of their customer experience, and you have to map out what that customer experience looks like from the time they call in, from the time they get the quote, from the time their first service is done, from the time they get their first bill. Everything's need, everything needs to be repeatable, replicatable, and scalable. So that way, when somebody goes into your machine, like you're building a machine, a cog, like an assembly line of like, you know, take McDonald's, they put the burgers, they get the, they get the bread, they throw the toppings on there, they wrap it up, and they send it out the door. Your sales process and your customer journey needs to be like an assembly line. Everything has a place. And when one item gets into one certain place, this is the experience that happens. And when that experience is over, they move over to the next spot in the assembly line and they have the next experience that happens. So you are taking them through a customer journey. And and, and when you can actually grasp this concept of uh, of articulating a journey for your customers to go through, it's going to largely affect not only the number of sales that you close, but how long people stay with you. Do you in part of your journey, do you have a way to continue to cult, to 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 grab their attention, to keep them informed, to provide value for them outside of just the services you offer? Everyone can cut a freaking yard. Like everyone wants to talk about, um, oh, we we have the best quality of service and. Um, you know, we're we're a team of experts. Everybody's a freaking team of experts. Nobody cares and your client doesn't care. 
they know if they have a number online, you have some sort of team and expertise to take care of their yard, which overall isn't a very hard task to do. The things that you need to focus on are the things that give your clients the biggest problems and why they cancel their service providers and why they've canceled with you in the past. Things that are their pain points. One of them is going to be like your quoting process. How fast can you get a quote? Do they have to wait on an appointment for you to show up to give them a price? And if you do, if they do have to wait on an appointment, how long does it take you to actually send the quotes out after you've had that appointment with them? So there's that part of the journey. After that, how consistent are your services? Consistency is a very big one in our industry of why clients are going to cancel. If they don't know which day you're coming out to service their home and they don't know which day to leave their gates unlocked, if there's a lack of communication of when the services are going to be provided to them, that is a pain point. That is a large reason why people will cancel. Another one is communication, which kind of ties into consistency. You have to be able to consistently communicate with your clients, keep them updated. Hey, we didn't come by today. We got rained out. We're going to be there within the next 48 hours to get your yard done. If there's holidays and you guys are going to be closed, well, maybe you want to send a form of communication out after each service has been completed. So that way, if they're not home, they're getting informed that their yard or their home uh, service has been done. So there's communication. The other part is like, how is your billing structure? Do you have contracts? Do you not have contracts? Is your billing structure creating friction? That's why I got away from offering contracts because it created friction between me and the customer. People don't want to sign contracts. And there's also other things that go into contracts that you can, you know, that will lead you likely to lose money and customers can take advantage of the price and how much time you spend there. So that's why I went to an all a la carte system. If somebody wants something done, they have to pay for that specific service to be completed. So they have one item for mowing, they have one for hedge trimming, one for taking care of weeds, and one for anything else they want to get done around their house. When we did contracts, they would come out and they'd want their hedges trimmed every single time. They'd want their weeds pulled every single time. So when you start billing for those items individually, they don't harp on you because they know if they want those services done, they have to pay an additional fee. And that's one of the problems that we fixed within my own business was like how we did our, our billing structure. So there's all these things in your customer journey that you need to evaluate. But the biggest thing I can, I can encourage you guys to help get more sales, close more people, is to make sure you're at least at the very base fundamental getting those quotes out fast. If you know you're getting those quotes out fast, you can mark that off the list and then start going through your estimate and sales process and then go through your customer journey and find these breaking points that are causing friction between you and your client and eliminate them. Figure out what the problem is, find a solution and implement it. Some of these things might take weeks. Some of these things might take months. Some of them might take a full season to multiple years, depending on you know, how rooted the problem is into your systems. So this is just something to be aware of, to be conscious of, and to work on as you're going into this next season. If you were been just sending out quotes, whenever you get to them, maybe it takes a day or two. And again, this is just for, you know, pertaining to maintenance services, like you're losing money. Like I can tell you, you are losing money. We closed so many freaking sales last year just because I made that one change. That is the reason why I wanted to talk about it is that one change of how fast you sp send those quotes out will will completely impact your 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 business. It doesn't cost you any more money. It doesn't cost you money to send out quotes faster uh, unless you're using like AI tools, which I do use because the cost to benefit of it is completely one sided. Like you way more benefit from using AI tools to send out your quotes in uh, a fast time and limit manner than you do if like you're physically having to go and visit the property, set up appointments. Uh, maybe you ran late on your route that day and so you can't show up to your appointment on time. You got to let them know. And now the customer's like, oh, we got to wait another 30 minutes and we're trying to have dinner or whatever it may be. So reduce the friction in your business. That's why sending quotes out fast is a form of reducing friction. Your customers aren't waiting on you. They have the tools and the information they need to make their decision. So these are just things to think of, to be conscious of and aware of if you're not closing sales at the same volume that you would like. I hope this helps you guys out. I hope you 
start being aware of your close ratio. And just to give you a quick recap on your close ratio, just in case you've never done this before, it's basically going to take the number of leads that came in and the estimates that were sent out and how many of those converted over to new clients. That'll give you your close ratio. One estimates versus estimates sent out. Do the division on the two of them and you'll get your closing ratio. And you need to track this every single week, every single month, and you'll get this data block and when you have this data block, it'll give you the information, just like your clients need their information to make decisions. You need information on your closing ratio and the numbers in your business so you can make the right decisions on how to operate, navigate, and to run your operation. You guys go out there. Have an awesome year. Keep putting in the, putting in the work. Get ready for the 2024 season and go out there and kill it.